Hi, and welcome back to my videos for General Chemistry 1. In this video, we'll find out more about the many different shapes that molecules can have, and we'll see that there are lots more possibilities than the ones we've seen so far. In the last video, we saw that many molecules have one of these five shapes, depending on whether they have two, three, four, five, or six bonds on the central atom. But we also know that lots of molecules, including really common ones like water, don't have any of these shapes. The secret is something that you learned about back when we first talked about Lewis dot structures. In many molecules, the central atom has an unshared electron pair on it. Those electron pairs take up space, and they repel the electrons that are in the bonds, pushing them away. For example, last time we saw that carbon dioxide has two bonds, and these get as far apart as possible, so they make a 180 degree angle, and we call that a linear shape. Meanwhile, formaldehyde has three bonds, which makes a trigonal planar shape with an angle of 120 degrees between the bonds. But notice that in both of these cases, the central atom didn't have any electron pairs on it. For example, suppose we had the molecule sulfur dioxide. Its Lewis structure looks like this. As you can see, the sulfur has two bonds, like the carbon and carbon dioxide. But unlike the carbon, sulfur has an unshared electron pair. The unshared electrons take up space, so this won't be a linear molecule like CO2. Instead, the unshared pair will push away the electrons in the bonds so that the bonds are at a 120 degree angle, just like in the formaldehyde molecule. However, this isn't a trigonal planar molecule because the electron pair isn't visible when we look at the atoms. We only see the two bonds, and we refer to this shape as bent. The important thing to learn here is that in order to know what the shape of a molecule is, it's not enough to just know how many bonds there are. We also have to know how many unshared electron pairs are on the central atom. It's the total number of bonds plus the electron pairs that tell us what the shape will be. Here's another example. We saw last time that methane is a molecule with four bonds on the central atom and no electron pairs. This makes a shape called tetrahedral, with a 109.5 degree angle between the bonds. If we look at the Lewis dot structure for ammonia, you can see it has only three bonds, but there's also an electron pair in the nitrogen. That means the molecule looks like this. There's still an angle of about 109.5 degrees between the bonds, but we can't see the electron pair. That means this shape isn't tetrahedral. Instead, it's called trigonal pyramidal. And this finally lets us talk about water. The Lewis dot structure of water shows that there are two bonds on the oxygen and also two electron pairs. That's a total of four things on the central atom, so the angle between the bonds will be about 109.5 degrees, just like in a tetrahedral molecule. But since we can't see the electron pairs, we call this a bent shape. Notice that we also got a bent shape for sulfur dioxide, which we looked at earlier, but it's not quite the same. The sulfur and sulfur dioxide only had one electron pair on it, which gave us a 120 degree angle but there are two electron pairs on the oxygen and water, which means its angle is 109.5. Whenever you give the name of the shape of a bent molecule, it's important to mention which one you mean, the 120 degree bent shape or the 109.5 degree bent shape. Well, let's keep going. We saw in the last video that when we have a molecule with five bonds and no electron pairs, we get a trigonal bipyramidal shape. In the molecule sulfur tetrafluoride, there are only four bonds on the sulfur, but there's also an electron pair on it. It turns out that the electron pair will be in one of the equatorial positions, so the molecule will be shaped like this, and this is called a seesaw shape. If there are two unshared pairs and three bonds, as in this chlorine trifluoride molecule, the two unshared pairs are both in equatorial positions, so we get what's called a T-shaped molecule. And if there are three unshared pairs and just two bonds, then all three unshared pairs are in the equatorial position. So we get a linear molecule, as in xenon difluoride. This is the exact same shape we got with carbon dioxide, so it has an angle of 180 degrees between the bonds. 
The last shape we learned about in the previous video is the octahedral shape, in which there are six bonds and no electron pairs on the central atom, and all the bond angles are 90 degrees. If you look at xenon oxytetrafluoride, you'll see that this molecule only has five bonds, but there's also an electron pair on the central atom, so the bond angles are still 90 degrees. But since we can't see the electron pair, the shape isn't octahedral. Instead, it's called square pyramidal because it's shaped like a pyramid with a square base. Finally, in the molecule xenon tetrafluoride, there are four bonds and two electron pairs. The electron pairs are on opposite sides of the molecule, so the four bonds make a kind of plus sign shape, and we say that this is a square planar molecule. So, to sum up, here's what we know about the shapes molecules can have. To determine a molecule's shape, the important thing to know is the total number of both bonds and unshared electron pairs on the central atom. For example, if the total number of bonds and electron pairs is 4, the bond angle will be about 109.5 degrees. The exact shape will depend on how many of the four are actually bonds, either tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, or bent. Remember, the reason for all these shapes is that the electrons repel each other, no matter if the electrons are in a bond or an unshared pair. This concept is important enough to have its own name. It's called VSEPR theory, which stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. In a nutshell, it says that we can predict the shape of a molecule by considering the number of bonds and unshared pairs around an atom. The bonds and electron pairs position themselves so that the distance between them is maximized. Now that we know that, we can use VSEPR theory to find the shapes of some molecules we used in previous videos. For example, here are three molecules and ions that we saw when we were learning how to draw Lewis structures. In NH4+, the central atom has four bonds and no electron pairs. That means it has a tetrahedral shape and all the bond angles are 109.5 degrees. Meanwhile, the carbonate ion has three bonds and no electron pairs on the central atom. That means the bond angles will be 120 degrees, and it has a trigonal planar shape. Finally, dinitrogen monoxide has two bonds and no electron pairs on the central nitrogen. So it's a linear molecule, with a bond angle of 180 degrees. We can use this to find the shapes of even larger molecules. For example, here's the Lewis structure of acetic acid. The molecule doesn't have a single central atom, but we can figure out the bond angles and shapes of every atom in the center of the molecule. So, for example, this carbon has four bonds and no electron pairs. So the bonds are in a tetrahedral shape, and the angles will be 109.5 degrees. The second carbon has three bonds and no electron pairs, so the bonds are in a trigonal planar shape with angles of 120 degrees. And finally, this oxygen has two bonds and two electron pairs, so the bonds are in a bent shape with a 109.5 degree angle between them. If you put all that together, you get a picture of the molecule like this. You can see the tetrahedral and trigonal planar carbons and the bent oxygen. You can use VSEPR theory to find the shapes of tens of thousands of different molecules, even very large ones, and it helps explain why lots of chemical reactions work the way they do, as you'll see in lots of chemistry courses you take in the future, especially organic chemistry. Well, that's enough for today. In the next video, we'll learn more about what molecules like these really look like, and it'll give us an even more accurate picture of the molecules and ions. I hope you'll join me for that, but until then, have a good week.